Prisca Morrissey, who uh, was the person who, who proposed this theme uh, to us, uh, I think about eight years ago, maybe. <laughs> uh, I think I was just beginning at my, my uh, journey with Domator. And so um, I'll turn it over to Prisca, Prisca, Prisca who's going to um, highlight some of the uh, things that we've learned uh, throughout this wonderful, these wonderful panels uh, from all of our, our participants. Um, thank you. Okay, <laughs> merci, Demi. Hello, everyone. Uh, between the introduction on Tuesday and this uh, concluding remarks, we had five live research sessions during which not only I learned a lot about the history of trades and techniques in early cinema, but I also learned how to use a chat room. Yes, so I decided to save time by speaking in French, sorry, and asked uh, Clara, Eau Claire, thank you, Clara, uh, to kindly post in English the English translation in the chat. I hope that the uh, translation will be easily uh, readable, easy to follow. And uh, thank you for your understanding. Donc, bonjour à toutes et à tous. Uh, entre l'introduction de mardi et ces remarques conclusives, nous avons vécu ensemble cinq sessions live durant lesquelles non seulement j'ai appris beaucoup de choses sur l'histoire des métiers et des techniques dans le cinéma des premiers temps, mais j'ai aussi appris à utiliser un chat. Et donc j'ai décidé pour gagner un peu de temps de parler en français et j'ai demandé, je remercie Clara, euh, de bien vouloir donc euh, de poster au fil de mes remarques euh, la traduction en anglais dans le chat. J'espère que ce ne sera pas trop compliqué à lire, on a essayé de faire des blocs pour que ce soit plus facile. En tout cas, merci pour, euh, pour votre compréhension. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'un musée, un musicien, un musée, n'importe quoi, qu'est-ce qu'un musicien d'orchestre de salle de cinéma Comment un acteur se forme-t-il au jeu pour grand écran Quel savoir Alors, je ne sais pas si... Est-ce que, es, est que Clara est là Clara, est-ce que tu es là ah, Je ne vois pas du tout. Oui, oui, oui. Je, je passe oui. tout de suite. Vas-y, tu peux juste, lancer euh... le premier bloc, si tu veux, si tu y arrives. Oui. If not, I have... ouais, okay. ah, je ne sais okay. pas pourquoi ça ne veut pas coller. Pardon. D'accord. Euh... Une seconde. Je ne pas à copier ouais, coller pour quelque raison que ce soit. Sinon, tamons bien mon format doc. Oui, 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 oui j'ai tout. Ça ne colle pas, je ne comprends pas. Est-ce qu'il a... y a un... Uh, so I uh, I made this. Si I trop long. have it here, I think. So. Uh, non, je vais essayer. Parce que sinon les petits noms. Ah, uh, c'était trop long. Ok, j'ai trouvé. C'est bon, c'est bon. J'ai trouvé. C'était okay. trop long. Et donc je vais découper tes blocs un peu plus petits. C'est tout. D'accord. Ok. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Clara. Uh, donc où en étais-je uh, Oui. Alors, comment un acteur se forme-t-il au jeu pour grand écran, quel savoir-faire développe un censeur ou un comptable qui se spécialise dans l'industrie cinématographique Comment se conceptualise, se transmettre, se partage les savoir-faire qui font de chaque métier À partir de quel modèle, de quels problèmes spécifiques au spectacle cinématographique, depuis sa fabrication jusqu'à son exploitation, comment ça s'institutionnalise euh, s'institutionnalise la division des tâches Comment les métiers de la distribution ou ceux de l'animation, par exemple, se forment à partir de médias préexistants Et en quoi ceci influence euh, l'organisation, les gestes, la hiérarchie entre les personnes Quels étaient les termes exacts employés à telle époque, dans telle entreprise, tel contexte Quelle réalité se cachait derrière chaque terme Les femmes coloristes dans les années 10 se définissaient-elles d'abord comme coloristes ou comme employées Et que raconte le choix de ces termes Peut-on voir dans la reconnaissance en Italie de certains opérateurs actualistes dès la guerre italo-turque une spécificité nationale Quel rôle jouèrent les transferts culturels d'un média à l'autre, d'un pays à l'autre, de Paris et sa banlieue vers Fort Lee ou Flushing, de l'Italie vers l'Amérique latine Autant de questions, et je pourrais ainsi continuer très très longtemps, qui donnent un tout petit aperçu de la richesse de l'ensemble de vos interventions et de la richesse des sessions d'échanges qui se sont déroulées toute cette semaine. Ces sessions en direct ont permis d'ouvrir de nouvelles pistes, de préciser des points. Ça a permis également de mettre en parallèle, de faire dialoguer des objets, des situations nationales différentes. On a bien vu, hein, 
le, le, voilà, les, les, les interventions dans, dans le chat et les, et les remarques, les commentaires, les questions. Merci à l'ensemble des panélistes et merci aussi beaucoup euh, à l'ensemble du public, euh, panélistes, participants, public extérieur, d'avoir contribué à faire de ces échanges des temps forts et des temps vivants du colloque. L'histoire du cinéma, comme en ont témoigné les très touchants hommages rendus à la générosité et à l'érudition partagée de Paul Sper, se construit pour une grande part dans le collectif et les échanges avec nos pères. PIRS. Nous avons tous pu constater cette semaine à quel point ces moments étaient essentiels et je crois que nous aurions souvent aimé pouvoir les prolonger de visu autour d'un café ou d'une bière, bien sûr, mais ce n'est que partie remise. Cependant, au-delà de la frustration, je souhaite aussi en conclusion revenir sur les possibilités offertes par le numérique et Internet. Bon, bah, D'abord, évidemment, ça a permis, grâce aux efforts notamment de l'équipe de Montréal, au colloque de se tenir en pleine crise sanitaire mondiale. Challenge, challenge aussi pour vous, participants qui ont accepté, qui avez accepté de poster vos interventions. Donc, pour en revenir à, à, à ces contenus même des sessions live, il a été de nombreuses, à de nombreuses reprises question de la numérisation des films, des archives, de la presse, de nouveaux outils qui permettent de rechercher, d'annoter, de traiter des ensembles de données, et enfin, des outils ou des processus de partage et de mise en commun des connaissances. Un grand nombre d'études et un grand nombre de panels ont témoigné de la manière dont toutes ces nouvelles possibilités modifient depuis quelques années et continueront de modifier dans le futur proche nos pratiques d'historiens et d'historiennes. Et pour faire le lien plus particulièrement avec le thème du colloque, et encore plus spécifiquement avec la question des métiers, l'histoire des métiers, j'ai envie de souligner à quel point la numérisation d'archives disséminées partout dans le monde et mise en ligne se révèle ici absolument essentielle, même si la numérisation... On sait bien, évidemment, nous, surtout, nous qui sommes historiens du cinéma à propos des films, mais c'est valable, en fait, pour tout un tas d'autres documents. Évidemment, cette numérisation, elle n'est pas neutre, mais elle ouvre sur tout, et elle-même ouvre sur tout un tas de questions et de questionnements et de problématiques. Mais ici, évidemment, je voulais insister sur le côté positif et, euh, et utile. Je pense évidemment à la presse généraliste, à la presse spécialisée, à des ouvrages anciens qui sont parfois devenus rares, à des archives papier ou films. Il suffit d'aller regarder ce que proposent nos deux institutions partenaires, la Fondation Pathé et la Cinémathèque française, sur leur site, pour voir la richesse de ce qui est offert aujourd'hui. Mais aussi, et plus largement, de l'ensemble des archives qui sont liées au parcours, et à la, au parcours de vie, aux trajectoires professionnelles des personnes. État civil, leur mobilité, la manière dont, cette, dont les personnes définissent leur métier à telle date, dans tel cadre administratif, avec toutes les précautions évidemment d'emploi, comme avec n'importe quel document, mais les recensements de population, les fiches des lecteurs, les matricules militaires, les listes de passagers sur les paquebots traversant les océans, les archives aux frontières, les demandes de passeport, etc., etc. Alors évidemment, le numérique n'a pas inventé ces documents et leur mise à disposition est aussi liée à un calendrier juridique légal qui est propre à chaque pays. Cependant, cette accessibilité nouvelle permet aujourd'hui d'analyser bien plus facilement, par exemple, la question de la mobilité dans les parcours individuels entre plusieurs régions ou entre plusieurs pays. On en a eu plusieurs exemples. Et puis, surtout, lorsqu'on étudie un métier et lorsqu'on réussit à identifier, on a une, commence à avoir une liste, peut-être pas complète, mais tout ou partie des membres qui, à un moment donné, se définissent sous le terme tel métier, etc. Ça permet en fait, d'avoir accès en fait, à un grand nombre de profils de pouvoir les mettre en série et d'analyser plus finement ces groupes, et ainsi rendre, rendre compte de la potentielle hétérogénéité, ou au contraire, confirmer des ressemblances entre les membres de ce groupe. Donc, toutes ces recherches sont aujourd'hui, elles ne sont pas nécessairement nouvelles, mais elles sont grandement facilitées par toutes ces numérisations. C'est excitant, c'est prometteur, et on l'a vu dans les échanges hein, sur les outils d'annotation, etc. Et ça impose vraiment en fait, de, de réfléchir à nos méthodologies, à nos outils, et donc, du coup, aussi en lien de réfléchir aussi en fait, à, nos, à nos problématiques qui, elles aussi, bien sûr, évoluent. Et donc, du coup, en conclusion, j'aimerais replacer ce colloque aussi en, du point de vue des problématiques entre celui de 2018 et celui de 2022, colloque de Domitor, afin de montrer comment se réinventent sans cesse, mais de manière évidemment toujours liée, les questions historiographiques qui parcourent l'histoire de Domitor et peut-être plus généralement l'histoire du cinéma des premiers temps. Hier, lors de la table ronde consacrée au colloque Provenance, il a été rappelé combien il importe de faire une histoire matérielle du cinéma. Alors, dans ce colloque sur les métiers et les techniques, 
euh, il y en a eu des tas d'études, de, par exemple d'objets techniques ou euh, des questions très pragmatiques, de la question de la circulation physique des copies, négatives, contre-types, positives, la question des échantillonnages, etc. Et tout ça s'inscrit dans cette histoire matérielle du cinéma que met en avant le colloque provenance. Et concernant le colloque de 2022, j'ai découvert hier, peut-être comme vous, le thème très prometteur, copyright, droit d'auteur, un sujet absolument passionnant, franchement j'espère que ce sera confirmé. Et là encore, les liens ils sont tangibles, tant du point de vue des techniques, si par exemple euh, sont intégrées les questions de brevets, hein, ou que du point de vue des métiers, parce que là aussi il est absolument passionnant d'intervenir, de, de regarder la question, d'entrer dans la question des métiers, de leur histoire, en interrogeant la question des statuts, statut des salariés, les droits, et puis toutes les formes et stratégies de reconnaissance et de visibilité. Bref, vivement 2022 Donc je terminerai en renouvelant, en renouvelant mes remerciements aux deux institutions partenaires qui ont, comme l'a justement rappelé Jean-Pierre Siroitra en introduction, elles-mêmes, euh, chacune, grandement participé ces dernières années au renouvellement historiographique de ces questions de métiers et de techniques, aux universités et groupes de recherche partenaires, à l'équipe technique de Montréal, vraiment bravo, hein, c'est super, ainsi qu'au comité de direction et d'organisation euh, du colloque, bien sûr, merci à toutes et tous. Merci à Katharina aussi pour toutes les traductions euh, ces, ces derniers, ces derniers, sur les derniers panels. Et merci enfin à Tami, à qui je laisse euh, le plaisir et la, la parole pour conclure cette belle et stimulante euh, semaine de colloque. Merci à tous. Thank you so much, Priska, and uh, I think you did a wonderful job of, of uh, summing up all of the uh, fantastic contributions that we've had this week. Um, as we began on Tuesday, uh, we were so excited and, and so unsure of what this experience and this format would bring, and I think that we could never have imagined uh, that it would uh, go, run so smoothly with so many rich uh, contributions um, that will keep us thinking, I think, for a very long time. And uh, so I'm not going to say uh, too much, except that I would uh, like to um, uh, just kind of uh, echo what Priska said uh, about these exchanges and the incredible things that we have learned, uh, uh, the connections that have been made between science and art, uh, technology and aesthetics, between the classical and the modern. Um, there's um, just, it's incredibly rich. Um, and uh, so I won't try to sum it up again. But I, 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 most of all, I want to uh, encourage you to continue the discussions in our, our forums, uh, to also visit our listserv, um, to visit our website. Um, I want to um, uh, thank uh, wholeheartedly all of our uh, uh, presenters from uh, across the uh, over six countries, I counted also um, with our, our participants over four continents um, from Australia and North America and Latin America uh, to Europe and um, and to uh, Russia, uh, which is not a continent, I'm, I'm well aware, but uh, a European part of the Soviet Union, <laughs> the former Soviet Union. Uh, so we, we're really, um, we've just had an incredible um, coming together from so many different parts of the world and so many different time zones. Uh, we didn't know how it would work. Um, and I just am re really happy that it has just uh, really been wonderful, has gone so wonderfully and that we have all of you, we've been able to share this and uh, this experience and um, to reflect on these questions together. Um, uh, as Gwendolyn said, you know, uh, challenges sometimes bring uh, more wonderful things than we can uh, imagine. Um, and so, uh, with that said, I, I, I again want to thank the presenters, thank our, our, our public attendees, uh, thank the programming committee once again, uh, uh, thank our executive committee and our archival partners for the wonderful work that they've done. I want to re-emphasize that you can still see the films, uh, 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 two of the films on our site or at the connection through I, that you can now go, this is not ended, think of this as a beginning, you can now go back and watch all of these presentations one by one uh, and put in, you know, I think there's enough there for at least uh, 40 hours of, of viewing. Um, so please revisit these and please comment in the discussions and please uh, um, 
yeah, so continue these discussions. And um, finally, I want to then uh, say that, uh, or not quite finally, but um, that we will be continuing with, uh, with uh, the Media Ecology uh, Educational Workshop, with the Graduate Workshop in the spring, um, and uh, also for our participants, or for, for our con contributors, we will be in touch very shortly regarding the publication of these wonderful presentations. And uh, yes, other than that, I would just like to uh, um, have us all celebrate what a fabulous uh, coming together this has been. Um, it really feels like family. And, um, and so I'm really thankful to everyone here and uh, our family in Podenone that normally hosts our General Assembly and our partners in Paris and uh, all of you from uh, wherever you may be at this moment. So um, just thank you on behalf of, of the entire conference committee, the executive committee. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so thank you. And uh, so if, if you would like, I, um, uh, I, w I could close things off here, but I'll welcome you to open your cameras and, uh, and microphones if you'd like to say anything. Um, um, do we see, uh, translation? Would you like a translation? Sure. Oh, well, I just want, uh, we, we thanked the team. Um, Absolutely, and the technical team, which was at the top of uh, my list. <laughs> Uh, when we decided to do this online, we had a very tight schedule and uh, I was the contact person, the key person here, but uh, that involved me simply relaying uh, <laughs> orders basically to a team and uh, with any other team, I think that uh, we, uh, the, the, this, this conference would, would not have been the success that it was. So uh, really, again, thank you, Hugo, for keeping track of everything. Uh, Guillaume uh, Lavoie and uh, Nadir Jebar in Quebec City at Laval University were in charge of the budget. The translations, those uh, 40 abstracts and bios, uh, they did not translate it themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. Guillaume and Nadir were really on point with this project. At uh, Université de Montréal, Joël Lehmann, I'm sure that you've all uh, had the opportunity to see how efficient uh, Joël was. But behind Joël, there, there was also uh, Duca Hornung. Uh, most of you probably don't realize, but we were hacked actually 10 days before the conference and Luca within a matter of about 90 minutes managed to wrangle back the control of the site and re-save the conference. So uh, thank you Luca again and of course Anne Levaik, the, the website, uh, it's uh, Anne's creations, uh, every bit of content that, that is on the website and it, uh, you know, it, it arrives uh, <laughs> in multiple packages. Uh, she was still uploading, uh, well, um, updating the website yesterday. So uh, yeah, Anne really made, uh, like created miracles with the, with the website. So uh, yeah, I would like to personally thank all of these people. Uh, this could not have happened without them. So thank you team. And what also one last word, thank you Canadian socialism. Like uh, it's because we still have, you know, uh, it's far from yes. perfect. <laughs> have some maple syrup and Canadian bacon because we paid for this. Yeah, Canadian taxpayers paid for this. So uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Canadian taxpayers. And that's my final word. Thank you. Perhaps you can just, everyone can just put the micro on and, and clap. Yes, thank for you. For the team, for everyone, for... Uh, for Louis, for Prisca, for uh, Jean-Pierre, who... Uh, help secure the funding for Demetrios, for uh, all of our wonderful, <laughs> uh, for Clara Eau Claire. Um, I can't, yeah, it's just, uh, there's so many people to thank. Um, and I, yeah, so echoing our, our welcome, uh, all of the people that are listed then, I, 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 and all of the people that have helped us through um, with, uh, so from our, our uh, from Katarina, who's been, uh, summarizing your comments and uh, translating them uh, to all of the, the people who have helped um, 
uh, helped us to be a bilingual conference and saved us uh, thousands of dollars in translation fees. <laughs> um, so um, this is a new format, and I think we really have to think about it. It's just, I mean, it's been really wonderful with Joel Lehman. I cannot thank him enough. Uh, would not have been possible without him. Would not have been nearly as uh, stress-free without Joel Lehman and his team. Um, so I just uh, really want to thank them uh, wholeheartedly. And uh, yeah, all of the people and, that have been involved in this, it's been really just wonderful. Um, and our participants. Uh, from all over the, uh, Luciana and uh, um, Jitka and Wyatt and Jeanne and uh, uh, all of our, our presenters who have, who have uh, Artemis, all of our uh, who have joined us from across uh, from and Oksana, all of the people from all over uh, that have and then the attendees who have really been uh, just great at showing up every day and giving us an audience of uh, 50 to 70 uh, people each day. We were we were worried if it would just be us in these little uh, chat rooms, and it was far from that. So, yeah. Uh, can I just uh, yeah. add to what you said, Tammy? Um, I, I think it, it, I'm really just uh, reiterating what I think is in many people's minds, which is that. Um, yeah, we managed to turn um, a potential disaster, which was, you know, the cancellation of the Paris conference into something which really has taken Domitor to a new level of um, inclusivity. And I just think, uh, for me, I think the, the realization came when I chaired um, one of the first panels and realized that we were actually uh, connecting seven different cities, uh, which is unimaginable. Um, under any other circumstances. Um, it was fantastic. And I think our decision to um, post all the papers pre-recorded and in some cases text in advance so that people could actually study them and then bring their thoughts, their comments to focused discussions is a real model, I think. Um, when you think about you know, the tediousness, let's be honest, of sitting in a hall listening to papers in real time, um, delivered with a variety of different uh, um, presentational skills, let's say. Um, that's really quite, that can be quite, um, quite boring. Whereas I think this gives us all the flexibility of allowing us to see and hear people's thoughts in a much more considered way. And I think, you know, I'm reiterating Tammy's point about the quality of the presentations has been absolutely fantastic. We're getting mostly much higher quality presentations than we would get if we were all sitting in the same hall because people have had time to think about them, present them, and they've been wonderful, really high quality. Um, so I, I think the benefits definitely outweigh the disadvantages. It's been a great conference and uh, I, I've enjoyed it enormously. Um, I keep writing to people, to my colleagues here um, uh, in London, saying uh, I'm in a conference which is actually global <laughs> and it's a very strange experience because here I sit in North London but I'm actually in a global conference which is really uh, an unusual and, and, and very uplifting experience and there's not much to be uplifted about at the moment but uh, I, I feel uplifted as we come out of it. Um, and I just, I think that the problem is going to be turning these wonderful, mostly audiovisual presentations into texts in a book. That is not going to be easy. But, <laughs> you know, that's the next challenge. And maybe, maybe we shouldn't even be thinking about a book in the conventional sense. I mean, if we actually go with the flow of what we've done, is a book the final resting place for these or is something else? I, I would like to leave you with that thought. Maybe we should actually capture the audio visual essence of what we've done over the last four days and all the months leading up to it and find some way of, of uh, encapsulating this conference, uh, which is beyond a mere book. Uh, I I, a lot. And I think, uh, I think maybe we can do both. Uh, but um, like I said, we'll have the papers submitted hopefully. And um, but I do think that yeah, all of these uh, 
I mean, if you haven't yet gone on, well, of course you will have, um, but if our, in our audience, if you haven't gone to all of the, the click on our domtor.org uh, and um, programs and to go through each one of these, um, I really feel like we have, you know, filmmakers here. <laughs> um, and uh, so um, the kinds of uh, wonderful uh, audiovisual presentations, it's true. Um, you know, maybe we should make a film with all of these, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so uh, the, the other thing too that maybe like jumping off of what uh, Ian was saying, which I agree with very much is maybe a good inheritance of this for the future is the fact that, I mean, it, it's been the most kind of equally bilingual and kind of multi-participatory yep. conference that Domidor has had in a very long while, at least 20 years, maybe more. And so uh, I think in our very deliberate effort to expand beyond, you know, kind of Western Europe, North America, you know, that's something enabled by technology, but let's maybe find ways to kind of do it even if we use a physical kind of conference. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. and that's one of our priorities. Um, one of my regrets about the, the, um, the, the move from uh, Paris and with the pandemic that we did lose just a few participants in that process who weren't able to uh, uh, participate today. Uh, and those are people from Turkey, uh, who, people were speaking about Turkish cinema, um, Muslim women in early cinema, uh, cinema of Japan, uh, Chinese cinema, and I, I'm so uh, grateful that we did have presentations on early uh, Latin American cinema that were incredibly rich, and um, it's really just so important for us to expand beyond our um, Eurocentric um, kind of uh, comfort zone or with a uh, but for me, it's uncomfortable, and I think hopefully for all of us, it is that we, that we need to really reach out. And we've just been getting wonderful presentations from all over. This has over, been over the last few conferences. We've had um, presentations from Nadi Tofi Yan on uh, Philippine cinema and Charlie Musser also. Um, and that, and we've, we've just, I think we really want to continue with that, but it's uh, true to echo what Ian is saying that this platform uh, also makes that easier uh, in some ways. And so I think that we'll have to really think about, um, we are planning a face-to-face -face conference uh, at the Library of Congress that I'm really looking forward to in 2022. And I really hope that all of you can come. And uh, uh, we'll there will be a series of, of conferences during that period, hopefully one week right after the other, Women on the Silent Screen in New York, uh, Domitor in, in Washington, D.C., the Orphan Film Sym Symposium in Montreal, Bologna Cinema Ritrovato, and uh, then of course Next will be in there somewhere, and, uh, and then Podenone. We have all these wonderful uh, places to go and to discuss these things, but I really, um, I do hope that we will be able to have those uh, in-person coffees and wines and beers, as Priska said, um, and these discussions, but also that we might have to uh, think about having a, an online component like this, maybe doing both. Um, because uh, just having that kind of accessibility and also uh, Global warming, uh, I read yesterday, was at its lowest level in North America uh, since 1983, uh, uh, partly uh, uh, due to the pandemic. So that's also a, a, a big <laughs> thing that uh, you know we can help with. Um, so we'll you know we'll have to uh, be look, looking at these things over the coming uh, years. And uh, yeah, as a last uh, word, perhaps I can. Thank you, Tammy, and say thank you, Tammy. Merci, Tammy, and just applaud you also with the mere mic, perhaps. Oh, thank you, Tammy. <laughs> Merci. Um, Merci, Tammy. Notre travail collective. It's been a wonderful uh, collective uh, creation. So, yeah, I don't want to say goodbye. So I will. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll the very last person, as I was yesterday, we stayed on for an extra hour um, and had our little uh, virtual posta uh, like we have in Pordenone. So um, it's, uh, yeah, if, if there's anyone, uh, I know that the participants probably can, we can't be seen or speak on the microphone, uh, although you can request to be uh, that. Um, 
by writing to Joel, but otherwise, um, yeah. It's... And also remind your students about the workshop, which will still do and submit their essays. That's the year round component of the organization. So please encourage your students. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would just say that we know that the graduate workshop, when we decide when and how to do it, we'll have to have a different format. And I think there's a lot to learn from our experience of the last four days. Uh, so I think we really, the job that lies in front of us is to come up with a graduate workshop that is as inclusive uh, as this conference has been. And that'll be an interesting challenge. We will learn from that. I have no idea what shape it'll take yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll come up with something. I must go. I'm going to say, here's to the next one. And a special thank you to Tammy. Really, without your um, leadership, and it was leadership, we wouldn't be here in congratulating ourselves. Thank you. Thank you so much. Moi aussi. Merci, Tammy. Merci à toutes et à tous. À très vite. Bonne à tous. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank every I thank you to all. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you, thank you, Gwendolyn and, and Cecile and Oksana. Thanks, Tammy. Doron, thank you. And thanks for the questions and, and, and the comments on, on, on the panel and uh, for making this happen. I, I, I remember talk. us four years ago. Uh, uh, Jan and Marina and I, and we just had everyone in the same room and it was big, big, big headache and you are doing it across the globe and uh, uh, extremely well done. Oh, thank you, Doron. Thank you so much. See you soon. Good night. I appreciate particularly your energy, your joy. It makes so much of a difference. And then, as a Francaise, J ai, j ai, cet esprit de colloque est complètement différent de ce que j'ai pu voir et ça me fait tellement plaisir. On devrait prendre modèle. <rire> Merci beaucoup, Cécile. L'énergie <rire> et la joie, all of the joy and energy comes from uh, seeing all of you. So, it, and being together and uh, so it's just really, yeah, it's a, c'est un grand plaisir. <laughs> I would wish we were in Paris. J'aurais bien aimé être à Paris, mais uh, c'est vrai que là, on n'a pas besoin de uh, décalage horaire, uh, no jet lag, and um, so it's really, yeah, and uh, just really wonderful to see you and uh, to have you here. So thank you so much.